Good morning, guys. It's Friday, May the 8th, and we are back in my kitchen, which is, um, for those of you who have followed our YouTube channel or checked our Facebook page since the start of uh, COVID-19 quarantine, uh, should probably be a pretty familiar place to you. We are back in this kitchen this morning because we are going to tackle a project, um, a culinary project. So um, again, for those of you that follow us um, on the, the Facebook or YouTube or whatever, um, you will know that since this has started, I have developed something of a, uh, an obsession with, we'll call them old tiny recipes that seem to be surfacing in popularity right now, making a resurgence because of the limited number of ingredients that they uh, involve. So we have tried peanut butter bread, which was pretty good. I would make again with a couple minor tweaks. We have tried chocolate depression cake, which was awesome, and I will definitely be making that again. I have a basset hound that needs outside. Sorry, hold, hold, please. No consideration for when you're working. Just done. Um, yeah, so today's recipe is one that uh, I have seen popping up um, and it looks, it sounds delicious to me. Um, I love nothing better than desserts that are like lemon or citrus. My all time favorite would be key lime pie, um, followed by anything lemon. Um, just love anything lemon, cheesecake, lemon bars, lemon squares, lemon mousse, doesn't matter. Lemon is great. Um, so when I saw this recipe pop up, I thought, yep, that's one we definitely have to try. Um, and it was a perk because I actually happened to have most everything I needed to make it, um, which is good because it only takes three ingredients. So anyway, um, we are gonna make an old timey lemon icebox pie. And yes, I did just get a little Southern there, but that's because um, it seems to be a Southern US Thing. Um, all the websites that I looked it up on um, seem to have ladies with southern drawls talking about their grandmas. So maybe I should get a little southern and talk in a draw and, and refer to my grandma while I'm making the, the pie. <laughs> in any event, I think it's going to be good. Um, it is very simple. It's so simple I'm actually dubious about whether it can work. But we shall see. Um, some of these recipes have surprised me and some have, you know, let me down. <laughs> we'll see. It'll be an adventure. So right now, I'm enjoying my healthy breakfast of Greek yogurt with muesli and fresh berries and a drizzle of honey with a high test cup of coffee. But as soon as I'm done that, we're going to get baking. So I hope you'll stay and join me. Okay guys, so hopefully you were gonna be able to hear me from where you are. Um, so let's talk about this lemon icebox pie. So I said it was but a few simple ingredients and it is really but a few simple ingredients. So few that I'm not even sure this can possibly work. This may turn into a rather expensive mess, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. So first thing you're gonna need is um, a graham cracker crust. So this is just one of those Keebler ones that you can buy ready-made in the baking aisle. If you don't have a Keebler ready-made pie crust, um, just take um, like a sleeve of graham cracker cookies, pulse them up in a food processor, or put them in a Ziploc bag, roll over them with a rolling pin to turn them into fine crumbs. Then you wanna heat some unsalted butter um, and add it in by the tablespoon until you can, the test for if it's gonna work when you make the crust is if you put the crust mixture, once it's combined with the butter in your hand and you give a squeeze and when you let go, it kind of holds the shape of your hand. So that's the very quick in dirty version of how to make a graham cracker crust um, if you don't have one ready-made, but I've got one ready-made here, so that's great, we're gonna use that. You're also gonna need two cans worth of sweetened condensed milk. So this, happens to be low fat sweetened condensed milk, which interestingly enough is not fundamentally different based on the nutritional information on the label than regular condensed milk. So I have a bit of a bone to pick with the manufacturer on this one because I was hoping that by using the low fat version, it was gonna make it a much uh, substantially lower um, 
points value for Weight Watchers, but when I priced out the points based on this tiny little crust producing 12 pieces of pie, it's still gonna cost me 11 points a piece, which is robbery, so it better work and it better be good. But anyway, two cans of, in my case, low-fat sweetened condensed milk or the high-test stuff, if that's what you've got. It works out to be, what do we got here? About two and two-thirds cups worth, okay? So that's that. And of course, the secret, not so secret, really, ingredient, lemons. So we need about three quarters of a cup of fresh lemon juice and the zest off those lemons. Seriously, dog? No, you're not going outside right now. You just came in. They say never work with kids and animals. It's right, it's true. Okay, three lemons. Um, so I have zested two of them already. The zest is here. This is what's gonna give you the really punchy, tart lemon flavor because most of that lemon flavor is hidden in the oils that are in the skin of the lemon. So let's zest our last lemon here. Now I have a sinking suspicion that if this recipe works with lemon, it might work with other citrus. I mentioned in my intro that, whoops, my favorite dessert of all time is key lime pie. I'm sort of thinking that's what this is gonna turn out like in terms of consistency, almost custard-like, even though this is a no-bake recipe. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll believe it when this works, we'll see. But at any, in any event, it's smelling really good, like the zest off these lemons, it smells like summer, it smells delicious. And you just wanna get the bright orange zest. You don't want any of the white stuff underneath. That's called the pith. And it's um, it's bitter. You, that's just not what you're looking for. So I pretty much got all that I'm gonna get off of there. Okay. And by the way, goes without saying, especially now uh, that everyone's so conscious of it, but make sure you wash these really well before you zest them, okay? Just because you never know. All right. Lemons aside, I'm going to move my zest over here until we need it. Now we're going to juice our lemons. Now, um, I'm going to use my electric juicer for this, um, but if you don't have one of these, um, you can get, uh, most dollar stores have them. Let me see if I can dig mine out real quick. Yeah. Most dollar stores have them. They're called reamers. They're a little wooden often or sometimes plastic um devices or if you have one of the old school like the glass juicers where it kind of looks like a plate with with this kind of mechanism on top you can just juice your your lemons that way but this is a pretty this has been a great juicer actually this is sunbeam and it has lasted well i got it as a shower present when i was getting married and <laughs> so that would be 23 years now uh that i've had this juicer so way to go sunbeam Let's get those juiced. We're looking for three quarters of a cup of lemon juice. So you can see the, the advantage with the electric lemon juicer is that you get basically a, just nothing left inside that skin. Now, actually, if you take this, by the way, um, if you keep these skins, if you wanted to make the most delicious lemon gelato, you would need a lot of lemon uh, juice to do that. But keep your lemon halves after they've been um, juiced, put them in the freezer, and then when you make your lemon gelato, you can put your lemon gelato in here and it makes such a pretty little serving cup. Just kind of slice the bottom off so it's nice and flat, stick them on a cookie sheet in your freezer, and bingo bango, you've got a little lemon juice cup. Lemon cup. <laughs> Now something else to bear in mind about the, um, the sweetened condensed milk, and this is something we've actually done a couple of times at Senior Center in our various cooking classes. Did you know that you can turn sweetened condensed milk into the most delicious dolce de leche kind of caramel sauce? Um, so all you need to do for that is you peel the label off the can of sweetened condensed milk. You don't take the lid off. You put your can inside a crock pot on high, 
Um, you boil a kettle of water until it is boiling. Then you pour the boiling water over top of the can so that the lid of the can is submerged by at least half an inch or more. And then you simply walk away for between five and eight hours. Now, the longer you leave it, the darker the caramel sauce is going to be and the thicker it's going to be. So um, uh, on the low end, five hours will produce still a pretty um, liquidy, delicious, but dark, beautiful caramel sauce, which is great for like ice cream sundaes or cheesecakes, um, like on top. If you leave it a little longer, um, you can almost get, uh, the, the, the stuff will come out of the can almost in chunks. It'll be very dark brown, very golden, smell delicious. Um, have a reminiscent of brown sugar taste um, and you can beat that into a cheesecake if you wanna make like a Dolce de Leche cheesecake. So just a little handy tip there to do with your sweetened condensed milk. I have done it on many occasions and it's delicious. If you mix that Dolce de Leche um, caramel sauce that you've made in your crock pot with some um, cream cheese and some crumbled up score chocolate bar, it makes the most delicious dip for like fruit, strawberries, angel food, cake chunks, you know, ladyfingers, whatever. It's delicious. Back to the lemons. I got sidetracked. a little bit better than uh, three quarters of a cup of lemon juice. Now I did have one lemon here that I zested um, and now that I've taken the zest off I'm gonna have to use this guy fairly quickly but I'm gonna hang on to him. I don't think I want to muck with the recipe and add any more lemon juice than what the original recipe called for but I am gonna save my little lemon halves over here. Okay, set my little juicer aside. I'm gonna grab a whisk here, just in case, we'll see. And I'm gonna use a glass bowl. Now, I don't know whether there's a whole lot of truth to this or not, but I always feel like when you're working with things that have a lot of lemon juice in them, you should always use a glass bowl. I don't know if there's some kind of chemical reaction if you're using like a metal mixing bowl, or maybe I'm imagining that. I don't know, where's Bill Nye the science guy when you need him, but um, we're gonna go with a glass bowl regardless. So into the glass bowl goes the entire two cans of sweetened condensed milk, or in my case, the low fat sweetened condensed milk that's really not fundamentally nutritionally different. Still can't get over that. What's the point? Okay. Spatula to be licked later by me, just for clar clarification. Now our whisk and our lemon juice, I'm just gonna add it in. I honestly don't know how this can work, but they tell me that once you get it all combined, you will feel the sweetened condensed milk. Oh my God, it's working. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, it does. It starts to thicken. After a, after a point when you get it quite well combined, it does start to thicken. Look at that. That's like um, semi-set pudding like you would get like out of an instant pudding mix. Holy cow. Wow. That's amazing. All right. I'm going to add in my zest. I want to make sure I get it all because again, that is where that really delicious, I think maybe now I'm going to switch to my little other whisk or spatula here rather. This is where the really punchy lemon flavor, I think, is gonna come from for this. Holy gosh, it smells 
Beautiful. Now, I saw, once I saw the initial recipe for this, I thought, yeah, right. So I did look it up in several other websites, and there are, of course, a whole bunch of variations. The one that I saw that really made me nervous, though, um, involved using four beaten egg yolks in this mixture. Nothing else, no baking, just four egg yolks mixed into here. So the lady that was doing this video assured everybody that it was gonna be safe to eat. Um, and I know you can eat, you know, you can eat eggs that are like over easy where the yolks are not fully cooked, but I'm not, I'm not just not comfortable eating something where I know the yolks haven't even approached getting warm. I just not so kosher with that. Um, it, her pie turned out beautiful. It looked great. Um, but that's just something that kind of makes me a little bit worried. So, um, not doing that version today, but before this goes in the crust, we are going to give it a little taste because there is nothing in here that's going to hurt me. Oh my god. That is delicious. Oh my gosh. And I have to move because this is really starting to set up. I cannot honestly believe. Like it's really gotten quite thick. This is crazy. So I'm going to pour this back into our crust or into our crust. Oh my gosh, that tasted so beautiful. <gasps> Cannot wait to get into this. Oh my gosh. This looks great even now. It, it looks really good, it smells delicious. Now it needs to sit in the fridge for at least three hours um, or preferably even overnight. So if I can stand to leave it overnight, we'll film tomorrow uh, and do the official taste test tomorrow, but there is a very good likelihood that this is going to be dessert in like four hours time. So we shall see. Um, but in the meantime, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the little plastic Thing that came on my pie crust, flip it over, pinch it back on here, and then I'm going to pop, um, pop this bad boy into the fridge. Okay, so the pie has set overnight in the fridge and it is time for the official taste test. So Walter, say hello to all of our Senior Center members. Hello. <laughs> if that wasn't a deer in the headlights look, I don't know what was. Okay, Walter, give the pie the official taste test and give us your honest opinion, okay? What's the verdict? Moist. Yes. <laughs> I know that's a word people hate, but okay, yes. All right. Uh, light, lemony. Light and lemony. Good. Creamy. Okay. Very nice. Nice. Taste less filling. <laughs> Taste less filling. We're not talking about beer. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about dessert. I think moistly is a good word. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Have another piece. <laughs> gonna, okay, well, I think that about says it all. So I'm going to give it a taste test now myself. Okay, so it is time for the chef to give the pie the official taste test. So here we go. It looks nice. It's not yellow. It's very kind of pale white with little flecks of lemon zest in it, which I'm hoping is where the flavor comes from. Oh gosh, guys, it's really good. It's very much the consistency of what a key lime pie would be, but it's very much a lemon flavor. And I'm thinking that comes from the lemon zest that's in here. For the amount of ingredients that's in here, I would say this is a winner winner chicken dinner recipe. So save this one, try this one. This goes with the chocolate depression cake. Try it, try it, try it. Honestly, I think you guys are gonna love it. I kind of want another piece myself now, actually, because I'm going to plow through this. 
contains no Lysol. Contains no Lysol. <laughs> <laughs> the struggle is real, folks. Welcome to quarantine. No, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, please try this. This is a really good recipe for the very few ingredients it takes. Excellent. It's creamy. It's light. It smells good. It looks good. And it takes very, very little time. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And thanks for coming to my kitchen. And we'll see you guys again real soon.